Hello, welcome to episode 192 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 6th of January. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and a happy new year. And I've got a couple of things to share with you since last week's podcast. So I have some knitting, I have some confessions. I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and some information on my shop update this week. So this week I've decided to pop a little bit of footage at the very end of the podcast with my little Jensen modelling some hand-knitted garments. So I'll pop that at the very end of the podcast if you want to stay tuned for that. Next week I'm planning on doing a little summary of the things that I completed out of my Make Nine knitting list. So I thought that would be nice to share with you next week. So the Craft 20 a Day Make Along came to an end at the end of the last year and I'm going to announce a couple of the prize winners for the last quarter. So they'll pop the names on the screen. If you see your name, if you send me a personal message on Ravelry with your full postal address so that I can send your prize out to you, or if you haven't got back to me by next week, I will message you the myself. Thread, all the and I also have 2021, I've drawn a couple of prizes from that thread too. So we have Kelly to knit, who's Kelly from North Carolina, and Elsa Creations, who's Elsa from Sweden. You two are the winners for the Craft 20 a Day Make Along for the last quarter. And the winners for all the Crafty Things thread are Pink Magic Knits, which is Tracy from Norway, and Linda Shields, which is Linda from California. So congratulations to everybody. Anyway, let's get on with the good stuff, shall we? I have some knitting to show you. So first of all, I have a cowl, and this is called the Traveller's Cowl, and the pattern designer is Mackenzie Alvarez. Hopefully I've said that correctly. And it's basically a panel that is knitted flat and then it is joined at the back um, and I've just used a blanket stitch there um, to make sure it's as neat as possible and it's got this amazing cable detail so I absolutely love the detail on this what a gorgeous cable pattern and I'll show you what it looks like on pop it over my head so I knitted this in a DK yarn I should say actually Liz knitted this in a DK yarn um, and it's written for sport weight so it has come out very slightly bigger I think um, but I thought DK sport weight is very very similar and you get this beautiful detail across the front so it's very visible for everyone to see once you're wearing it. So it is made for sport weight yarn so I just made a note of how much um, yarn you need out of the DK weight yarn um, as opposed to the sport weight. So I think the actual sport weight um, measurement said you needed three skeins but I actually only used 208 grams which my skeins are normally just a little bit over so two skeins was plenty um, to make this cowl. So I had actually dyed up three um, out of my Because the Night colourway so I'm actually in planning on getting Liz to knit a hat to go with it so watch this space in the next couple of weeks and you'll see hopefully a hat to match. Well, at least in the same yarn. It's not um, the same pattern, obviously, because I couldn't find a pattern that went really well with it. It was nice to know that you could get the cowl out of two skeins. And Liz knitted it, so she's a little bit of a looser knitter than me. So hopefully most people could get it out of two skeins of yarn. It is quite wide around the neck with it being out of DK. I'm not quite sure whether the sport weight version would be slightly narrower. Um, but you could, of course, actually. I did think about putting a loop on one side and a button on the other so that you could loop it round to keep your neck warm if it was very cold weather. But I do like the look of it as it is. Ta-da! <laughs> so that is my first finish object to show you, which Liz basically knitted all of it and then I sewed in the ends and stitched the back together to finish it off. So I've got a bit of a cheat. Liz knits some lovely things for me. So Liz is Adam, my partner's mum, and she does lots of beautiful knitting and she can never decide what to knit. So I say, well, I'll, I can pick a project and then I can show it on the podcast. So that's my first finished object to show you and I have a second finished object and these are the socks that I started before Christmas. These are an afterthought sock which means I basically knitted the tube and then the toe but then I did an afterthought heel on these. 
So these were knitted out of a 50 gram ball of Patterns Croy self-striping sock yarn that I got from Florida when we went there on holiday for our honeymoon a few years back. And I wanted to make sure that I could get a pair out of them that matched and I only had a 50 gram ball left. I had actually bought two, but I knitted a separate pair out of the other 50 gram ball previously for Adam's dad. So I thought Adam would love a pair to match his dad in terms of socks. So basically I cast on and did about, I think it was 14 rows of two by two rib. And then I just knitted a tube until I'd knitted about 25 grams of yarn. Then I pulled the yarn off until I was getting to the point where I was matching on the cast on edge and I knitted the same 14 rows of 2x2 two two rib and knitted the same tube up to where I'd got to on the first one and I had some waste yarn actually just because it was just over 50 grams. You might want to just stop knitting before you get to the 25 gram point if you are going to do the same as me just to make sure that you've got plenty of yarn um, but if you aren't going to make them match you can just knit till there's half the yarn used up and then I've added a contrast toe in blue to go with the blue stripe in this yarn and then I went in and I cut in a heel using the afterthought heel technique. I do have a video of the afterthought heel that I use and I'll leave a link just up here and also in the description box down below. I have got a full video tutorial which is two parts that actually you can knit a sock tube out of 100 grams of yarn and then split it into two pairs. Here I've just done one pair and knitted the toes as I go rather than doing an afterthought one like I've done in the tutorial. Those pair are finished and they'll be going in Adam's sock drawer. They are quite short because they are only made out of a 50 gram skein of yarn although Adam actually has got quite small feet um, for a man. He's about a six and a half, seven. So if you do have bigger feet and you've only got 50 grams of the main yarn, you may end up with quite a short sock. But it does depend on how thick your sock yarn is. And I do think that Patterns Croy is quite a thick four ply yarn really. So that is all the items that I've got finished, but I do have a couple of works in progress. So I have also got a sock tube that my mum knitted that I'm going to be making into a pair of socks as well. So basically I'm going to use the same method as I describe on my splitting a hundred gram sock tube into two pairs of socks, but this is just going to be one pair. So mum wanted to do some knitting. She doesn't do a lot of different detailed things. She only really does sort of knit and purl rib and just plain stitch. But she just wanted something to knit. So I said, well, why don't you knit me a tube and then I'll split it into a pair of socks afterwards so that she can just have a nice relaxing knitting process. So I got her to start off the yarn, um, knit sort of 14 rows of two by two rib and then just keep knitting. And then I got her to make sure that she was getting to the point where it was going to end with a very similar cuff which luckily it did and then I just did a stretchy cast off at the edge. So in my tutorial where I'm talking about splitting a sock tube into two pairs of socks I think I finished it with a sewn bind off using a needle but actually on these I've used a different technique which is a very pink knits tutorial where you're basically doing the two by two rib around but when you've either knitted or purled two stitches you then either knit or purl those two stitches together again to give an extra length of yarn and make it stretchier. I will leave a link to that in the description box down below because my description wasn't very descriptive <laughs> but you can see how that's going to match nicely and I can cut those into a lovely pair of socks. So the other thing that I've got that I'm working on is a cardigan and this is this was on my make nine list so I haven't quite finished my make nine but actually this was the last thing. So this is going to be the Wishes cardigan by Hopi Locatelli and it is a beautiful sort of waterfall cardigan at the front and I thought that would be ideal because I love wearing a waterfall cardigan and I dyed up some of my own hand dyed yarn which I haven't released yet and I may do um I may sort some out next week to go into the shop but it is a yak but it is a yak and a silk base which is lovely and drapey which already has grey colour to it and then I've dyed it with a mustard colour which gives this quite deep mustardy colour. And I shall show you the cake. This is one of the cakes. 
that's what it looks like very very soft and drapey and i did do a swatch before which has got all crumpled up in my bag now so this is what the swatch looked like and it does neaten up the stitches lovely except i've got a bit of thread stuck to there already threads get everywhere in my craft room <laughs> so when i swatched i didn't actually get gauge but i liked the look of the stitches i was getting three and a half inches instead of four inches for the width and about 3.75 inches for the length instead of four inches as well so it was smaller gauge than than the pattern suggested but like I said I liked how the stitches looked there so I thought I'm going to go with the gauge that I've got and I'm just going to pick the size that is appropriate according to my sort of modified gauge so what I did is I looked at the measurements, so sort of for the upper bust measurement and for the arms, and I wrote those measurements down, but I then recalculated the measurements with the new gauge. So what I did for each of the measurements, I did the measurement divided by four times 3.5 to get the new size in inches for the bust and the arms. And then I picked the one that was closest to my measurements because I didn't want any positive or negative ease. I just wanted it to be exactly my measurements so that it's sort of fitted but not too tight. And I found that I'm picking a different um, size for the body as to the arms. When I'm going to split for the arms, which I'm very shortly going to be doing, I'm going to be picking up a smaller amount of stitches around the arm compared to the size I've picked for the body. So what I've done is I've chosen my size according to my upper bust measurement. One, because the cardigan doesn't close anyway. It's not meant to be what that type of cardigan. It's sort of drapey, so it's fine. And also, if I did take my full bust measurement, which is around the fullest part of my bust, I'd end up with it drowning me a bit under the arms. So that's what I'm going to go for. Normally, I would do some short rows around the bust to then make it fit around the bust but because it's a very drapey cardigan that's not supposed to be done up I'm not going to bother with that as long as it fits up here and it drapes nicely that is all I'm worried about so I have done this much which is basically just to the point where I'm going to split for the sleeves so it's knitted from the back of the top down and it's actually knitted the neckband of this first bit up here first and then you end up picking up stitches along the side of it and so this is the back panel here and these two side bits are the sleeves and it's a bit scooched up at the moment but you get the gist so i have got a reasonable amount done of the cardigan once i split for the sleeves hopefully it'll take a little bit less time to do a row but i am enjoying knitting this it is quite an easy knit because you're doing regular increases um along the raglan increases which is which is a nice relaxing thing to do i think while you're watching the telly so hopefully I'll get quite a lot more done by two weeks time where I'll show it again. So like I said before, next week I'm doing a Make 9 knitting for 2020 to show all the projects that I completed from my Make 9 list. Which I'm really pleased that I've done most of apart from the Wishes card again. So you know, who knows, I might get it finished by next week. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so that is all my knitting that I've got to show you, but I do have some. So I have had quite a few gifts over Christmas and over the sort of Christmas period. But I'm just going to show a couple of things each week and spread it out a bit because otherwise I'd just be showing you all the things that I've either been gifted or bought over Christmas. So first of all, I wanted to show you a lovely gift that I was sent and it was gifted to be my the lovely Deanna. So if you're watching Deanna, thank you ever so much for this. But it is a gorgeous mini set by Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns. And I kept it in the box here to show you because it was packaged so lovely with a beautiful card, a little tea bag and a little lavender sachet. And then there's the little Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns logo. And you can see that I've already opened this. But I have kept it in the tissue paper because I thought it was really lovely. And look at those blues. I absolutely love these. So Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns do the most beautiful colours. So do have a look, a look at their website. I will leave a link in the description bar down below. I haven't decided quite what I'm going to make with it yet. But actually, because there's quite a nice range of blues there, it might be something for little Jensen. I haven't decided yet. I'll have to have a look at patterns and make a decision. 
but it looks so nice in the box it's a shame to disturb it <laughs> so that is the first thing i've got to show you and i have a book next so for christmas adam bought me the ahead of the curve book by cashmirette which is jenny rushmore and basically cashmirette make patterns for ladies who are a bit curvier which is lovely and this book has got some instructions on modifying patterns to get them to fit and it's also got a range of patterns in there as well so in the front here it does show the patterns that are included in the book as well which is good you've got like a little tank top some trousers a t-shirt which is raglan sleeve which is a little bit like the Frankie t-shirt that I've made which is a Tilly in the buttons pattern but obviously this is for the curvier figure so that'll be a great alternative and there's these two really pretty dress patterns um, which I'm sure I'll have a go at at some point but I thought it'd be really nice to have a copy of this so I had it on my wish list and Adam very kindly purchased it for me for Christmas so I'm really excited to have a go at some of these patterns so I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread, either on Ravelry or on my email. So if you have a question, you can pop to the Ravelry thread, the Ask Me Anything Ravelry thread, pop your question in there. I don't often reply on the thread itself, but I will do on the podcast. Or alternatively, you can email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com if you're not on Ravelry. So the first question I have is from Jan, and she was referring to my tutorials on on turning a great big 100 gram sock tube into two pairs of socks she was saying she's knitted a 100 grams sock tube and she wants to split it into two pairs of socks and she wants to know how much contrast yarn you'll need so i find for a pair of socks i tend to use between 15 and 20 grams of yarn of four ply yarn to finish one pair of socks with cuffs heels and toes so you should be able to get away with I think between 30 and 40 grams to finish off the heels and toes on both of those pairs um, you may even get you may even use slightly less than that but it does depend on what size tube you knit so if you're knitting a 60 stitch tube you'll use it about the same as me that is if your tension is quite similar to mine but if you are knitting a wider sock tube you will obviously use more because your toes and your toes and heels will be bigger but roughly I'd say 40 grams for two pairs of socks heels and toes and cuffs should cover you just so that you have plenty my second question is from jennifer and this is also a question on sort of sock tubes and socks so she was talking about making a pair of socks out of a 50 gram skein like mine where i'd knitted the cuff knitted to about 25 grams and then added a toe and then done the same making a second tube and then adding the afterthought heels in later and she wanted to know how do you know where to place your heel so the, I measure the recipient's foot from toe to heel and then the measurement that I you need to take from here to the point where you're going to cut is going to be that measurement minus about two inches and then you can cut in and add your heel and that should be plenty of room one thing that I would double check is when if you have added toes in before you've added the heels if you measure the length of the toe you when it's actually flat rather than on the these on the sock blockers so if you measure this length here that should give you an idea in terms of your gauge exactly how much that heel is going to take because in general that heel is the same length as your toe because they're pretty much the same shape with the toe I tend to decrease down to sort of 10 stitches whereas with the heel I decrease down to 12 stitches because you haven't got such a pointy heel then um, but I do do two extra rows before I start doing the decreases so the actual number of rows on the heel should be the same as the toe so in effect your heel and your toe should be about the same length so with your gauge it might be slightly different to mine so if you measure that and then take that measurement away from the measurement of the full length of the recipient's foot then that is how long you need to measure before you cut in the heel from the end of the toe so hopefully that makes sense 
So those are my questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and I just have my shop update information now. So last week I showed you all of last year's mystery yarn clubs which included the music from the movies Sock Club and also the mixtape minis. So all the yarns that I showed at the end of last week's podcast were last year's colours but they will be all new colourways for this year. So I'm continuing the mixtape minis club again but as I say, they'll be all new mystery colourways. So if you want to purchase the January Club for that, it is now available, but it will only be available on the website until the end of Sunday, the 9th of January. So this Sunday. So if you do want January's Yarn Club for the mixtape minis and for the new sock sets, do purchase them before it's closed at the end of Sunday. The Sock Set Yarn Club for this year will be Power Ballads. All those really powerful ballad songs will be included in this yarn club. So each month there'll be a different song and it'll be a mystery. So like I said, last, last week I showed all of last year's yarn club colourways just to give you an idea of what sort of colours I like to dye. But these will all be new ones. So those will be available till Sunday the 9th of January and they'll be shipped on the 15th of January because I'm going to dye them all to order and you get to choose the base that you want them on from merino and nylon, merino, nylon and stellina, BFL and nylon out of the four ply yarns and then I have the DK option of merino and nylon as well. This Friday I'm also going to be releasing the sock clubs from last year for January and February so these are last year's sock clubs um, as colourways for the website because they were really popular. Lots of people said, oh, can I order some after they'd seen somebody had posted them. These are going to be on my website without being a mystery. So this first one, As the World Falls Down. So this is a David Bowie song and it's from the film Labyrinth. And you've got some grey and blue and purple tones in there with little splashes of like amber as well with a grey tonal mini to go with it it's it's a sort of a blue grey contrast mini and then the other one I've got was from February last year so this is the power of the love from the film back to the future and there's blue yellow and red there with a contrast mini in red loads of people asked if this will be available this year and it will be on Friday. This will be Friday the 7th of January at 7 p.m. GMT. So these two will be on the website Friday the 7th of January at 7 p.m. I will also be releasing lots of my colourways which I normally dye to order on my website and also all my bags will be relisted and they'll be made to order as well. If I get absolutely hundreds of orders there may be a little bit of a delay on dispatch but I will put a warning at the top of the website if I have received a lot of orders for the yarns that I've relisted now that I'm back to dyeing and making bags. So if you have already put an order in for one of the yarn clubs and you wanted to add something to your order, you can drop me an email and I can add things to your cart. Or alternatively, if you just pop another order in, but put a note to say, please, could you combine my order um, with a previous order? It'll just make sure that I notice that you've got two orders and I can pop those together and refund you any shipping overages. So I have a new fabric that's going to go in the shop as well as bags and all the accessories and it's this really cute sheep print and it's got some little sheep with knitted jumpers on with lots of knitted details, balls of yarn in between and beautiful turquoise with little red jumpers. I've used black zips with these and you get a little sheep little charm they'll be available in both drawstring and zip versions they're basically the same size they've both got red lining to pick out the red details on the jumpers and there'll be two lovely big pockets inside so the, the drawstring looks like that and you can get normally about 400 grams of yarn in the medium sized ones but I do do smaller and larger versions as well. In the listing I've got a little video of it'll be a different print just to illustrate the different sizes. Um, there's a video of the three sizes of bag next to each other so that's the drawstring and then the zipped one is the same inside as well with the lovely red lining. So I've got a number of accessories that I make to go with these. I've got DPN cases, two different sizes. So the smaller one for the 15 centimetre 
DPN needles and the larger one is for the 20 centimeter DPN needles so there's two options there again they've got a red lining inside with press studs either side to keep your needles safe I have a circular needle case I have a video that shows you how to use these but these are pop your circular needles in there and they roll up um, and it just keeps your circular needles nice and safe so that it doesn't poke into your knitting I will also have some scissor cases and I've got red lining as well with a little button I've got a number of different scissor types that are available but you can purchase the scissor case separately and last but not least I have the little notions pouch I like this sort of shape because it sits up nicely on the desk um, so you can pop a few bits and bobs in there so all these will be in the shop on Friday at 7 p.m. GMT and also I will have the fabric for sale as well so you'll be able to buy this by the half meter if you want to make something for yourself as well. I do have instructions of how to make my bags in a pattern on my website which I'll leave a link to in the description bar down below but you can make all sorts of things it's a lovely good quality quilting cotton and who can resist a gorgeous sheet print <laughs> so before I go I have a little bit of footage of my lovely little Jensen wearing some hand knits so here we are so this week Jensen is wearing a really cute little flax light jumper that the lovely Julianne knitted for him with matching gorgeous little socks they are slightly big the socks for him at the moment but they have been staying on which is wonderful um, and this gorgeous opal yarn that it's knitted in and this and it's in a gorgeous opal yarn and it's he does look a little bit tight <laughs> and he does look a little bit bundled up at the moment because he's got dungarees underneath um, but it does will but it will keep him nice and cozy for our little walk and a gorgeous little hat that my friend Claire knitted so he is all ready to go on his walk with a little blanket as well because it is really cold outside today. So thank you, Jensen. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye.